All right, everybody, I am back with my friend Elium, the female to male transsexual here in Charlotte, who I met when I was a customer at a local establishment. Listen, so as usual, Hill Jane Unfiltered is being plagued by uh, technical difficulties, so I'm going to pre record this and Elium might stick around. If you guys have any questions, you can ask the video post. You can um, um, ask questions underneath, and I'll ask him, okay? So basically, I'm going to give, you know, a short interview right now. Elium, thanks for sticking around, baby. I know it's your off day and that you have a really, really busy work schedule. So I'm really grateful to you for uh, sticking around. You there? <laughs> it never fails. It never fails. Hold on, hold on. He's he's trying to come, you guys. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I couldn't hear anything that you said before. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, this is. I was just saying, you know, if you choose to stick around, that um, I'm going to post this as soon as we're finished, and if they have any questions, they can ask ask on the um, video, and I'll ask you. I will definitely will do. Okay, so we were talking. Reason it keeps cutting up, so I don't know if you want to move to another location and see. It keeps. I don't know what's going on now. You're you're coming in perfect. How how am I now? Uh, you come in perfect, but then when you start talking, like after a couple <laughs> of seconds, it just starts. It just goes away. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's now. See, I'm using on my phone, um, which I'm filming you on. Um, I'm using um, no gigabytes, but I have an S8, and it's, it has slowed down to like a S to like a three. But did, did you hear any of that? Okay. Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. so I'm just gonna stick here. Um, so I was asking about, you know, I got really really personal with you about your sex life and everything. Uh, the penile implant. I'm 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 intrigued. Is that something you want to get? Oh yes, I do. So, you're not interested in being um, a pre-op trans. You're not inter interested in being a transsexual. You want to be a man. And to me, to me, I see a man. I respect you as a man. I know you as a man. And to me, you'll you'll be a man. Uh, you but you, you want to be you want to be a man, and that that's your ultimate goal. Yes, exactly. Okay. Have you started putting funds up for that? Are you saving for that? Um, actually, um, I actually haven't because I'm saving for I have my cross surgery. That's the first one I'm saving for. You're saving for what surgery? You broke up. Top surgery. So that's the first one that I'm trying to get. So your top surgery. You want to have your breast. You want to have a breast reduction. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first. That's the first one that I'm saving for. It's like around ten thousand dollars. Okay. Really? So it's yeah, everything's expensive. It's I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. old. Maybe I'm old school. All this shit was so much cheaper when I was, you know, in my twenties. You know, I got my tits done for two thousand two hundred dollars, uh, and that was wow. It, yeah. What? Well, it was also under the table. I I got it done by a doctor who lost his certification. Uh, yeah, so a lot of us girls in Atlanta, that's the route that we went, and I have had some problems here recently, as I've gotten, as I've gotten older, I've had some, had some issues with them, uh, no, no pain or anything, nothing life-threatening, but, you know, my suggestion to you is, you're so passable now, if, and I, and if that's, if that's your, if, if that's your concern about being passable, it works, I don't, I would not, um, I would not be the least bit concerned about getting something done right now if you don't have to because you're so passable. How did your family, this is the most important thing probably, how did your family, how is your family handling the transition? Not, not well at all. Not well? No, like um, my parents. Hold on. I want to, you're, cut, you're, you're cutting out again. You're cutting out again. Hold on. Hold on. This is a... Okay. How are your parents handling the transition? All right. 
So they're not handling well at all. It's, it's, it has been a shock for them. So um, my parents, uh, my parents and my two sisters are back in my country, and I have some family in Philadelphia, which I haven't seen things i started my transition my, my transition so you know everybody's just wondering what's going on with it yeah they think i'm going crazy <laughs> well because because you know you come from um a, a hispanic a hispanic country and my knowledge from yes. from years of dating puerto rican men and hispanic gentlemen my knowledge is you know they are extremely extremely close family is everything to his, the hispanic community it's everything it's oh, yeah. life and many of us are like that in america but many aren't uh so i can for me like a little bit about me is that my transition, what I did, like you kind of, I moved away from South Carolina to Atlanta. That's where all the girls went to start, you know, lives and stuff. And it's where a six foot tall girl could get her start as a woman. So that's what I did. And my family, when I came back and I, I had, had everything done, they were, though they didn't understand it, they accepted it. So I, I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm not surprised. Do you? Has there been anyone in the family that just won't talk to you or is kind of disowning you? Well, my mom, my stepmom, so far she hasn't, she hasn't speak to me. And my father, you know, he kind of talks to me now and then, but not too much. But the rest of the family, I have, I haven't had them see me yet. They only saw me once, like on a video chat for Christmas, but that's about it. So I am waiting at least probably six more months that I look even more, um, into my transition so I can show them, you know, like, okay, this is me. That's it. There's nothing you can right. do about it. It's done. Well, let me just tell you, um, this is where I can come in and try to offer, you know, all jokes aside, you know, all sexiness aside, all flirtation aside. Um, this, this is kind of where I come in and um, to be a friend to you, so, so speaking to someone who's in the life, who knows. Um, this is going to be a really hard time for them. And that's okay. They love you. As God is my witness, I truly believe uh, your parents will come around. They'll come around and they'll realize, though they may never, I'm going to be honest, they may never understand it. My mother never understood and she was my soulmate, my best friend. Though they may never understand you, they will eventually accept you. You are their child. You are something to really be proud about. I, I, I truly believe in my heart that they will come around and they will support you. Again, they may not understand. They probably won't ever understand. But you're their kid and you lo they love you. They're going to eventually accept, accept you. So I would be... For me, what I did, I eased into it and I would go around. I would go around and I would tone down everything. I'd put my hair in a ponytail. I do a little bit of eyebrows, a little bit of gloss, not so much lipstick, just easing their way into it. And that was really the way that, particularly my one sister, my, which is always, which is funny, my cool sister was the one who was the least accepting. I have two sisters, a really conservative one and a very cool, open one. She was a teenager in the 70s and she was wild as hell. The same thing with me. <laughs> but my cool sister was the one who had the least problem, the biggest problem with it. The conservative one called me Hillary right away, and but my to this day my cool sister she doesn't call me Hillary she calls me by my birth name, and for me that's okay because I know I'm Hillary I've always been Hillary she can call me whatever she wants to I look at it as like a nickname uh, and again things like that don't embarrass me we were once we were what what now. We're back. We're back. Okay. We're back. She and I, we were once at a restaurant, and she did call me that name in front of uh, the server. And uh, I wasn't crazy about that. But anyway, that was just my little bit of advice to you. Advice to you. But I want to thank you, Elium, for coming on with me. Thank you for doing the live feed. That went so, so. Great interview. Um, I'm going to ask you to stick around. I'm going to get ready to post this. I'm going to stick around and see if anybody has any questions for you. I know it's a long thing, and, you know, I, um, again, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I think that you're great. I think that you are a good role model. 
I'm very proud to know you. I'm very proud to um, have met you. And uh, I don't know, Elium, what do you think? Friday and Saturday nights. What do you think about the two of us hanging out together and being seen at a local establishment together? I lost you there. <laughs> you did? I was just saying, can you hear me now? What was the question again? Say it again. I was saying, what do you think, Elium, yes, about, about the two of us being around together on a Friday and Saturday night? I'm, I'm making no, a, I'm making an innuendo here. I'm making a I'm making an innuendo here. I'm gonna give you an idea. Maybe um you might be seeing Neilium and I together sometimes. Not like that. What kind of minds do you have? Thank you, Elium. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. I'm so glad to have met you. I feel like it's an honor, and I really feel like you know your your help. You've helped me a lot with the understanding of that, and with um my little rinky dink show here. Thank you. And you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate what you're doing right now. Thank you so much for the time. Ilium says, Ilium told me to tell you guys, go out and get you some. <laughs>